Beloved, are you seeking profound teachings from the Bible that will deepen your understanding of Christ and nurture your spiritual growth? Look no further. The Grace Life Coming Podcast is here to guide you on a transformative journey. Join us as we explore a wide range of subjects, including the finished work of Christ, the knowledge of the Holy Spirit, the words and life of Jesus, the miracles of Jesus, and so much more. Our podcast offers simple yet profound teachings that will empower you to grow and mature in the faith. The Grace Life Kobe podcast will help you engage, learn, and connect. Don't miss out on this incredible opportunity to grow in your faith and connect with others who share your passion for Christ. Grace Life Kobe podcast, raising men to completeness in Christ. Subscribe and connect with us today and embark on a life-changing adventure. Grace to you, Jesus is Lord. Beloved, we are glad to have you listening again to simple yet profound teachings from God's Word. Sit back and be blessed throughout this session. God bless you. Be magnified. Hallelujah to your name. We thank you for that time in your presence again. We know you have come to do us good. And we know that today our life shall never remain the same again. Holy Spirit, we ask that you grant us understanding today. Teach us, grant us revelation from your word, grant us insights tonight. Your glory and praise shall be forever. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen, amen and amen. amen. We give God thanks and praise for another privilege of fellowship in his presence. To Jesus alone, we are the glory and praise forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. amen. Um, we want to appreciate God for this privilege of of um of retreating and um allowing the lord work on us amen um because of the assignment he has for us i got thinking today and a lot of things are running through my mind but i'm still in the place of prayers and i'm trusting god for what god is set to do amen to jesus praise god forevermore hallelujah um we are continuing on our study in first peter chapter 5 verse 10 this is just a session where the lord just speaks to us amen to jesus where out we just allow him flow we allow him flow we just allow him flow we allow him speak to us and we allow him um um work on us amen to jesus you know um we understood last week um in quietness and confidence shall thy strength be amen to jesus um and like i have always said um i've learned to Hear God in silence. Amen to Jesus. Um, I've learned to hear God in quietness. You know, one of the best things to ever do is when you don't know what God is doing. Keep quiet. Hallelujah. Because if you keep saying God is doing this, God is saying this, God is doing this, God is saying this, at the point that people begin to ask you what is happening. Why are you confused? Amen to Jesus. So when you don't know what exactly God is doing, what do you do? You keep quiet. And you wait on Him. In the place of waiting and silence, you would hear clearly. Um, one of my pastors there, he told me whenever he's in a point where it he t- he looks like everything is crowded, he doesn't know what God is doing, what God is up to. He says he shuts out from everybody, switches off his phone. He won't talk to nobody again. He won't talk to nobody. And then he just keeps praying and waiting on the Lord. And he said, in due time, God speaks. And we're together. And I'm. Um, the period of shutting out is one of the best periods you can ever have in your life. Amen to Jesus. One of the best periods you can ever have in your life. And more often than not, when we want to reach it, people think that you have to go to a camp. It's good. A prayer city or whatever. It's good. If you can afford it, please do. Praise God forevermore. But if you cannot afford it, I have done many retreats in my life. And I didn't go to camps. I didn't go to prayer cities. And you get what I'm saying? But I retreated and I heard God. Remember the first one? In fact... Well, I say it's the first one because when the Lord told me to leave my father's house when I was 25 and I went to rent a, a small apartment and I was living in my own apartment while still in my father's house. Why, why, sorry, my parents were still in the same city with me, right? That was literally a retreat period because I spent all of my time praying and praying and praying. I remember once my landlady, my landlady called me and said, Chimdi, did you go to pastor's school? I said, why did you ask? I said, because we used to pray, eh? The way you pray, eh? I said, no, I didn't go to pastor's school. <laughs> you have to ask me. Because the, way, the, the prayer will be thundering from that small box room they built behind. It will be thundering. I prayed. And we are still praying. Amen to Jesus. 
Now we may not be shouting while praying. Are you get what I'm saying? But we are we are living praying. Remember somebody asked me what to prayer schedule. I said I pray with us. <laughs> I don't have prayer schedule again. It's good. If you have prayer schedule, um, pray from 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. or 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. It's good. Maintain those. I remember what my pastor told me once. One of my pastors told me, he said, if you want God to lose, use you, you have to pray three hours every day. So nobody told me. I said, I pray three hours every day. From, I think, 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. Praise God forevermore. It's good. But as you grow in your walk with God, you understand, pray without ceasing. First Thessalonians 5 verse 17. So that was the period of retreat. And then, you know, when we were in our previous missions field, when a challenge came up, that was literally retreat. For that, two years then about, is that not so? Pray just like thunder. I will pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. That was a period of retreating also. Amen to Jesus. In um, this mission field, you know, I had to go on a two week retreat at a period of time. A period of retreat. And um, teaching, preaching to my family has been retreating also. Amen. Came to this place um, and for this new location. And the Lord told us to help in particular ministry. We helped and after we were the Lord, I began to, under- I began to understand what the Lord was saying. You see, there's something about God. If you don't want to... Um, 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 uh, <laughs> somebody says something. Say, you either succeed by motivation or you succeed by frustration. <laughs> One of the two. If you don't want to make a decision by motivation, you will make that decision by frustration. God will ensure that at the end of the day you make the decision. So either He motivates you to do it and, you, and God usually starts off by motivating us to do it. Are you getting what I'm saying? It starts by motivating us to make decisions. We motivate us and motivate us. And some of us, we see the motivation of God as comfort zone. So we think it's okay, let's re- remain in this mountain. I you what i Let's remain in this phase we are in. And God is t- telling you, see, I am giving you this motivation so you should move forward. But he said, no, you move forward. Praise God, we all. And so when God keeps motivating you and you need to go forward, then he... He removes his motivation. And once motivation is out of the picture, the thing that comes in is frustration. Simple. Once motivation is out of the picture, it's frustration. It's as simple as that. So once you start getting frustrated in any matter, watch it. God was motivating you by giving you an instruction that you refuse to listen to. And the Spirit of God will never strive with man. So the Spirit of God gets quiet. Are you getting what I'm saying? And then the devil enters with his frustration. Amen to Jesus. So frustration is a sign that you have ignored divine motivation. That's what frustration is. It's a symptom, it's a sign, and a symptom to show that you have ignored divine motivation. And you say, but pastor, how do I know it's divine motivation? That is why you need to work with the Spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying? Not everything that looks beautiful, comfortable, is God saying, sit here. When the children of Israel got to the city of Ammon, God told them, this city is for Sorry, it's not Edom, sorry. God told them this city is for the Edomites. It's for um, um, Esau's generation. You cannot have it. And they had walked for long journeys and they were tired. So they began to revolve around the mountain in that location. And why? Because if, when you get to a point in your journey with God and you are tired, what happens is that you begin to settle for alternatives. That's what happens. You begin to settle for alternatives. So alternatives is the sure tiredness in your work with God. That's what the Bible says, be not weary in well doing. In well what? Do it. Be not weary in well doing. For in the end, you shall what? Read if you faint not. So whenever you start getting weary, you start thinking of alternatives. Are you going to think? And let me tell you, alternatives are not bad. They just look like the original. That's all. See, the, the counterfeit is the proof of the presence of the original. Are you going know to say? The counterfeit, the presence of the counterfeit. Is the proof that the original is somewhere close by. And one thing about cannabis is that cannabis is always fast to act. But original takes time. That's the truth. I'm talking from experience, just in recent experience. Counterfeit is always fast to act. And counterfeit, before you know it, they've lost strength. Um, they've gone. They are sprinters. And life is not a sprint race. Life is a what? It's a long distance marathon race. So if you approach life with sprinter mentality, you will have before time. And counterfeits are always sprinters. But originals are what? Marathon runners, long distance runners. So they began to 
they are going to go down that mountain because they, what is the use going further? We have seen something that looks like it. They said the land is like this. This one resembles this small. Even if you cannot get the arena, let's get something that looks like it. And God looked at them and said, this comfort you are staying, eh? that you are going around this mountain. You are looking like it looks like it's good. I motivated you thus far to this mountain. I motivated you by telling you move, but you don't want to move. All right, you have stayed too long with this mountain. Tell you what, not what. And when God gets to that point, he says, tell you not what. He removes motivation out of the business. You have to move by frustration. Yeah? Nobody will tell you. Are you going to say? Nobody will tell you. Nobody will tell you. But that time, nobody has to motivate you. Nobody has to preach to you to live. You will live. You live. Nobody. And I'm very sensitive to know when God is beginning to remove motivation from the system. I'm very sensitive. Couple of months ago, I was praying, God, this place is too strong. Uh, Lord, I woke up one night, Lord, give me this mountain. Give me the nations. I'm made for more than this. I prayed and I was crying. For two hours, I was crying. Why? Because I was in a place where I was, where it looks like it was being, it was a motivated place, but it was not the right place. I didn't say it was a place, it was the right place for a season, but not the right place, not the right place. And I knew just barely one month of being there, I saw the first sign. I get what I'm saying. I saw the first sign, and I wanted to move, but God would not allow me to move because God wanted something, wanted me to learn something. And you know what? I discovered some days ago that. If you learn something, then you lost nothing. But if you learned nothing, then you won't lost something. And it got to a point where I began to pray. I said, God, the presence of the counterfeit is the proof that the original is close by. And I said, God. But the guy told uh, uh, Esther, if you were made for such a time as this. But if you do not do it, God will raise somebody else to do it. And I said, God, if this one will not do the work, raise somebody else. Not being that God had already raised somebody before the time. Just that counterfeit as sprinters. They will rub, and before you know the way out. But originals take their time. You know, one thing I've learned in life is, when you work with God, what is your own? He may go far, but you come back. Uh, what is your own? You go far. You may go far. But I'm talking from experience. 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 I'm talking from experience. I don't hold people. That's my life. I don't hold people. I don't cling, cling on people. I don't cling people. No, I don't do that. I don't even hold on to relationships. No. So people wonder, he doesn't call. He don't call. Not like I don't call, but you see, just to call you and say, hello, hello, how are you? How are you? How are you? Sometimes I know, I know it's not easy for me. I hear what I'm saying. But I don't hold on to people. Why? Because I know that as I'm working with the Lord, every person I need in destiny, if the person go, the person will come back. I don't believe in soldier go, soldier come, barrack does not move. The church is not a barrack. Relationships are not barracks. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are people that whether you like it or not, eh, you may say they are indispensable. When they leave your life, they'll be a vacuum. When God I shall, see, when God removed a weed from Adam, there was a vacuum here. There was a physical vacuum. Scientists make us understand that one side of the male rib is more than the other side, it's one. <laughs> Are you going to say? Are you going to say? So, no matter you do it, there's a point that they leave your life, you'll be, you'll be feeling the vacuum. But you, can, you cannot feel that. See, you cannot feel it the way it's meant to be filled. Are you going to say? That's the more reason why I am not somebody that holds on to people. Because if I show you love and you go, and I told my best to show you love and you go. If God says you are part of me, you will come. If He says you are not part, you will go to your part. Are you getting what I'm saying? And that's why most of the time Christians miss it. We try to hold on to people. We try to, um, to, to, to tie people down with different antiques. And it doesn't work. See, when, uh, like a, a, a man of God said, He said, before God showed him. Before he had an encounter with the Holy Ghost and began to experience church growth, say proud to them, say they will cook food. They say, they, say you know, pastors, you know that they'll come, they'll eat your food. <laughs> when they eat your food, they'll go. You'll see them again. They'll eat your food. We are talking from experience. Then he said, Oh, this thing is enough. Today, they're not cooking for the natural truth. But who will come? You know, the, the church will not even do evangelism. Do you know? 
But people are coming. They don't do anything spectacular, but people are coming. Are you getting what I'm saying? So we must understand these things in our work with the Lord. And I've learned it over the time. And before you know it, the Lord began to press. I was, I will be sleeping, I will be bothered. Ah, I, will, I, will, I lost my peace. God, no. God, no. God, no. I am more than this. I am more than this. You sent me to help, but there's something I need to learn. And by the time God has seen I had to learn the things I had to learn. You know the funny thing? Some of the times, you may be learning, but you know that you are learning. Do you understand what I'm saying? Especially when you are enjoying the learning process. You will not know you are learning. Sometimes emotions will never allow you to know that you are learning. You just be carried. But when you finish the lecture, you just discover that. So this was what I was learning all the while. This was what I was learning. God knew that I had finished learning, but I didn't know I had finished learning. You get what I'm saying? I didn't know I had finished but he knew that. And he didn't have finished learning, but I didn't have finished learning. So by the time I began to pray, and I said, God, you can cre create the opportunity for this, learning, this lecture to end. And as God created the queue, it was after them, we see them sitting down, reminiscing. Say, Ka, how are we even managing these things? But it was a learning process. Are we together? Sometimes you think you have learned it all, but God just teaches you some more things. And I began to understand. I remember a while ago I said something. I said, the ministry is the father's business, not a secular business. When you see a minister huh, who does business and a businessman who does ministry, you know the difference. <laughs> I hear what I'm saying. When you see a minister of the gospel who is doing business and a businessman who is doing ministry, you see, you know the difference. The minister of the gospel who is doing business sees everybody as a ministry. Are you getting what I'm saying? To fulfill. Are you getting what I'm saying? But the businessman doing ministry sees everybody as a commodity to acquire. <laughs> are we together? These are strong words, eh? These are strong words. Praise God forevermore. And there are things that we need to learn as we go in our work with God. Amen to Jesus. Because God is going to be exposing many of us to many things. Some of us will start doing great things that we never, we never imagined we'd do. Remember when I started for nine work of me, I felt so bad that you know all my dreams and all my desires have been dashed. Are you getting me? And I was talking with um, um, Ernest, and I was like, you know, I'm into ministry now. No more business. And I'm like, you are doing business. <laughs> he told me you are doing business. I'm like, okay. Then um, a pastor came to meet me, and he sat with me, and he was like, Chindi, Chindi, I respect you. He's older than me. I'm talking about, about you know, 15 years that about it. He said, I respect you. I celebrate what you are doing. He said, if I could obey God, if I could obey God one millionth or one tenth of the way he has op co um, commanded me to do, I should have been far better than where I am today. Now, I didn't understand that statement. I I, this is a branch pastor. Are you getting what I'm saying? This is a pastor in the church that was talking to me. In fact, there were a point in time they used to always Whenever they have issues, they talk to me and everybody. I'll just like talk with them. You know, he told me, he said, if I could obey God, if I could obey God, one tenth of the way I'm meant to obey him, I'll be far ahead of where I'm doing. So I did not understand what he was saying then. Are you getting me? This 15 years ago, I think by the day I'm understanding. Are you getting me? And he told me, he looked at my vision statement. He said, Ah, you see, God has called you to the ministry. And you say you had a passion for business. This is your this your vision statement is raise my of business in Christ. It's all encompassing. He said, don't worry, continue the ministry. In due time, you will see the business will still show up. That's what he told me. He said, continue the ministry. In due time, the business will show up. He said, hey, that thing will not die. Say, continue the ministry. In, in due time, the business will show up. That's what he told me. But he told me something that if I could obey God, one tenth. One tenth, I should be far ahead of where I am today. And it's not when somebody like that speaks to you, those words are heavy. They are very, very heavy. Very heavy. They are very heavy. And by the day, I'm understanding what he said. What is keeping us on? 
because we know that obedience is better than sacrifice. <laughs> that's what he's keeping us on. That's, that's all that's it. It's better than sacrifice. When I woke up again, talking to the Lord, talking to the Lord. After talking to the Lord, all I received was a song. <laughs> that's the song we're singing this morning. All I received was a song. After talking to the Lord, all they gave me was a song. That's it. I got the second song, Seb. I was trying to get the song, Seb. I don't know if I could get it right, Seb. So, after talking to the Lord, asking him some questions, he gave me songs. <laughs> How will his reply be so? <laughs> Amen. Well, that is a lot for you. <laughs> Amen. And when we look at a lot of people, sometimes just laugh at them and say, you don't know what this journey entails. And that's why sometimes you see some people that you, you try to talk down on them or criticize them and you wonder why they are still getting stronger. It's because you don't know how far God has brought them. You don't know how far. You look down on them, you feel that they don't have anything to offer. They don't mind you. Because you don't even see what they are seeing self. You think they are nobody, you don't see what they are seeing. You think they are, they, are, they, are, they are rubbish, you don't see what they are seeing. And if you cannot see what I'm seeing, I cannot help you see it. It's me God showed you to, it's not you God showed you to. Eh? If you cannot hear what I'm hearing, I cannot help you hear it. And what God spoke to is not you God spoke to, what's the problem? I leave you with your hearing problem or with what you want to hear. You can see what you want to see about me. You can hear what you want to hear about me. But that is your hearing and your seeing. I know what God has told me. I know what I've heard. I know what I've seen. I know what God has shown me. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah, Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. And so it's very important we understand this. They help us a lot as we walk with the Lord. They help us. They give us strength. I know. Remember when I started pioneering. You see, if I go, I was talking with somebody, man of God, and it was like, I've closed down four churches. The last, the first one when God told me it was like, God is like God was taking me to hell. I'm like, why all this? And when I told him, it was like, mm, you're supposed to write a book. That's a man of God that understands the dynamics of God's reading. He said, You're supposed to write a book. Because whosoever made you understand that when God calls you, He takes you like a catapult, draws you back and shoots you immediately, and you just see the target is deceiving you. Are you getting what I'm saying? God draws you back like a catapult. Yes. Are you getting me? But before he releases you, you will see a lot of things. And they're important for where he's taking you to. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah, Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. President 5 But the God of all grace who has called you, called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, set to you. We've looked at perfect, we look at establish. And we're looking at strengthening last week. Amen to Jesus. Amen. And we saw that the word strengthen is the word um, thing, thing. As thing means to make strong. It means to strengthen. And that means your soul. To strengthen one's soul. Praise God forevermore. So we looked at make strong last week. And we're going to be looking at to strengthen our soul. Are we together? Um, 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 I think it was Peter who was speaking. He said, and the Lord sanctified the spirit, soul, and body. He made us understand that man is tripartite in nature. Are you getting what I'm saying? Man is a spirit, he has a soul, and he, has a, and he lives in a body. With the body, man interacts in the physical realm. With the spirit, man interacts in the spiritual realm. And with the soul, man interacts in the soul realm. Are we together? When Adam fell, when Adam, when Adam was born, when Adam um, was created, he was in Genesis 2, verse 7, the Bible said, the Lord breathed into him the bread of life, and he became a what? A living soul. He didn't just become a soul. Are you getting what I'm saying? He didn't just become a soul. Because what the devil wants us to believe is that we are souls. Are you getting what I'm saying? He didn't become a soul. The Bible said not become, the Bible did not say he became a soul. The Bible said he became a what? A living soul. And what makes the soul alive is the spirit. The Bible, Jesus said, the word that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are what? And they are life. They are spirit and they are life. The word bread there in the Hebrew is neshama, which means spirit, soul. Um, in, uh, uh, um, divine inspiration, inspiration, intellect, and every of that. So basically, it's the spirit of God that God breathed into man, that made man a living soul. Are you getting what I'm saying? A living soul, not just a soul. So it is life there that makes the soul useful. Are we together? When life is not there, the man is not a living soul. The man is a dead soul merely existing. 
Are we together? He said, death so many existing. And so what the devil has done over the years is to make man stop at the soul level, not at the living level. And the original intent of the Father God was for what man to be at the living soul level. Are you getting what I'm saying? At the living soul level. Jesus said, it's the spirit that quickens. Said what? The flesh profited what? Nothing. Are we together? And he says, the letter killed, but the what? But the spirit what? Give it life. So now, as born again Christians, we are not souls. We are living souls. Are you getting what I'm saying? We are not just living souls. We are life giving spirits also. Are you getting what I'm saying? That was says, what I teach you, they are spirit and they are life. In other words, they are life giving spirits. When we get born again, our spirit is born by the word of God. The Bible says, you are born of an what? Incorruptible seed. Incorruptible there means it's, it means it, it cannot decay. It cannot decay. We are born of an incorruptible seed, which is what? Which is the word of God. So we are born of the word of God, which is the life giving spirit. That means when we got born again, we are born of what? The spirit. That means we have become what? Life giving word. Spirits. Praise God forevermore. So as, as new creations, we are not at the soul realm. We are the life giving. Uh, we are the life giving spirit realm that makes us living souls. Are you getting what I'm saying? Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. That's that's the most powerful realm. What the what the devil does over the time is to make people remember the soul realm. That's why you have to call uh, this other um, 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 movement and sex. They always want to take you to the soul realm. They call it soul travel, soul enlightenment, soul, soul, soul. They just keep man at the soul realm. And that's not the original intent. At the soul realm, you are just operating in two realms. And the soul realm is very powerful. Don't, don't think it's not powerful. I get what I'm saying. It's a very powerful realm. Are you getting me? Because the soul is superimposes over the body. Are we together? Because the soul is made up of the willpower, the emotions, and the what? And the intellect. The intellect makes you think. Makes you reason. Are you getting what I'm saying? It makes you, when you read, you assimilate. And you think with your intellect. Are you getting what I'm saying? Your emotion makes you feel. You cry. What else again? You laugh. Uh huh? What else again? You're happy. You're sad. That's emotions. Are you getting me? And then, you have the willpower. The willpower is what helps you enforce the decision of your intellect. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when your intellect says... Go and sleep. Your willpower makes you go and what? Sleep. That is why if you have a very strong will, you can superimpose over your body. You know, um, they asked a particular old man, why I live so long? I know what he said. He has a flower that he always waters. And he said, because I love to water this flower. <laughs> can you imagine? That's the reason why he has this. So he has... He has lived so long because he just wants to keep watering. Some people think that the will to live must be something big. The will to live can be something very stupid. You may call it stupid. Watering flower doesn't make sense. Are you getting what I'm saying? So someone is stupid. Are you getting me? But that's the reason why somebody is living. <laughs> are, are, are we together? That's the reason why somebody is living. And he has lived long. <laughs> to, to a good old age. And then when you tell children of God, have the will to serve the Lord. They don't see the reason to have the will to serve. And you want to live long. Living long doing what? What do you want to be alive doing? Are you getting what I'm saying? Praise God never more. We want to live, want to live, live long. Um, traveling around. Eating and having fun. Is that how there is to life? I want to go. They are not bad ideas, but is that how there is to life? Your will to live will be stronger than just basic um, necessity of life. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are, are we together? And you know why that guy could live long? Why? Because he was giving life to somebody else. He was giving life to something, which is the flower. Is that not so? Your will to live must be because you want to give life. That's the really base on which you can live and live well. Are we together? So we have. But these three are not enough. Are we together? Because there is a place you get to where they cannot carry you to the next level. Are you getting what I'm saying? They can't take you to the next There's a level you get to life where these three cannot take you to the next level. 
Why? Because at that level, you have gotten to the third dimension. Are you getting what I'm saying? The, the dimension of the spirit realm. Are you getting me? And the spirit realm is always higher than the soul. It superimposes over the soul. Now, so if you are the soul realm and you are trying to operate deep in the spirit realm, you will not be able to meet up. The spirit realm will overpower you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Praise God forevermore. And so that's why the spirit realm is very important. And that's why everything we do as children of God is spiritual. It's spiritual. The words that I speak to you, they are life-giving spirits. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God shall man live. Are we together? Now, um, we don't understand, some of time we don't understand these things. And we just discover that we are living a life in a realm that is below God's standard for us. Amen. God has given us his word so that we can be born of his word. And so we can superimpose over our spirit, over our soul. Praise the Lord for more. Now, when you go through pain, one of the things that happens to you is that you have soul damages. There's what you call soul ties. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are some people, they've been in a relationship with somebody that the thing has been so, they become so tied in their souls that breaking that, breaking that, um, that relationship becomes detrimental to their soul. Is that not so? For years, some of them run mad. Are you getting what I'm saying? Some of them run mad. They lose it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Psychological issues come out. It's because it's a soul issue. Now, if it's just body, if you end the relationship, body end, we go. Are you getting what I'm saying? If it's just body, we end the relationship, we go. But when it gets to the soul, it becomes very difficult. That's why Jesus said, love the Lord with all thy mind. With all thy heart. Told I so. Why? Because he knows that when you can get a soul, see, as in both, when you are born again, your spirit is at, it's at work. But the, the connector between your spirit and your body is your soul. When the Holy Spirit speaks to your spirit, it's called, um, it's called spiritual information. But when your spirit man communicates it to your soul, it is called revelation. Because revelation is what has been revealed by the spirit to the soul. Are you getting what I'm saying? And when the soul communicates it to the body, and the body acts on it, it's called what? Manifestation. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah, Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. And so the soul is a little man. It's a little man. And it's very, very important in our dealings as children of God. It's very important. The soul is very important. And so when the soul is shattered, how can the spirit communicate to the flesh? That's why in Philemon verse, uh, verse, I think Philemon verse 10, it says, Paul was telling the master of, uh, of Philemon, he said, for without your mind, I can do nothing. I can do nothing. I can communicate, your spirit, your spirit can be one with me. It can, it can, but if your mind is not in agreement with me, if your soul is not connected with me, there's nothing that can be done. And that's the reason why we, when we come to church, the Bible says, be not conformed to this word, Romans 12, verse 1, but be transformed by the word, by the renewing of your mind. That is the soul. Are you getting me? If the word that is alive, that is spirit and life, enters your spirit, but it does not renew your soul, it will remain as spiritual information there. Until it renews your soul, revelation has not been called. And that's the reason why a lot of Christians have a lot of spiritual information Dusty in their spiritual library. Yeah. <laughs> I've been to an old library before. You see some shelves back, 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 back. Remember when I used to go to the library when I was on campus to read? You go to some shelves, you see the books, you see these books, how are they important to us here? Yeah. And sometimes I just carry those books and I'll be reading. You be, when you are reading, you say, What am I reading, sir? How are they important to us here? Yeah? Are you getting what I'm saying? But it's not like they're not important. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are we together? But the courses we are doing, they don't apply. Are you getting? So when spiritual, so, so there are not Christians, there are lots of spiritual information that are just dusty in their spirit man. There, dusty, dusty, dusty. They are waiting for situations where the God is waiting for situations where they will go to that library. Are you getting me? And pick up those spiritual dust information, dust them off, or put them. And before their mind will start getting renewed. And once their mind starts getting renewed, what happened? Manifestations start happening. Glory to God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. 
Now, so very important is the is the is the is the soul. If the soul is weak, the Bible says, if your strength fails in the day of adversity, then your strength will. If you fail in the day of adversity, then your strength will what? Little. If your soul is weak, oh my God, your body cannot respond. Are you getting what I'm saying? Some people that make it through adverse health situations is just the strength of the soul. Are you getting what I'm saying? The strength of the soul. A will, they call it a will to live. Is that not so? A will to live. The will to live. When we go through pains, when we go through sufferings, our soul becomes weakened. Are you getting what I'm saying? It becomes whether you like, either you like, like one of my, uh, my pastors there, say, either you like it or yes. Either you like it or yes. When you go through sufferings, your soul becomes weakened. Are you getting me? Your soul becomes weakened. And see, it's good. People that are having all the medical approach to strengthening themselves, it's good. Um, psychological and um, trauma rehabilitation is good. But let me tell you something. When you do all those things, if you do not go to the world, eh, you would come out of a trauma and enter on that trauma. Why? Because the reason why you're entering into trauma is because there is something that you have not fixed spiritually. Are you getting what I'm saying? The reason why you are having issues left, right, and center with people having um, relationship breakups and breaks down and breaks sides, and you see beautiful relationships, you cannot keep them, is because you have a problem you have not dealt with in the world. And if you give me yourself psychological and medical trauma coaches and trauma, you will not deal with the spiritual issue that's without it. And you come out of one trauma, enter another trauma. And the funny thing is that the next one you enter will be worse than the trauma one you came out of. And so they come out of one relation, I, 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 I was seeing some, some, something, and we're like, it's so unfortunate. A marriage counselor, this is second divorce now. A marriage counselor, you get what I'm saying? This is second divorce. These are professional marriage counselors. Yeah. They are professional counselors. They went to school to study that. You get what I'm saying? But professional marriage counselor, second divorce. It is not a psychological problem, sir. It's not a soul problem, sir. It's a spiritual problem that has to be dealt with. When it is dealt with, the soul will be renewed. You might have to go to God and say, God, send me. You know what the worst kind of people have made is people that think that everybody is wrong. Are you getting me? People that think that everybody is wrong, that the only one that is right. And one of the people that can be like that is pastors. Pastors can be like that. They can believe that their members are all wrong. They are the only ones right. And what makes you a pastor is not because you are right than you are more right than everybody. It's just because you are just chosen. And being chosen does not mean that you are the best. Are you getting me? That time, some of our class prefects are not the best students. Is that not so? We're not the best students. But they are just chosen. The best to them are more often than not academic and they refuse to be class prefects, some of them. Is that not so? Because they don't want any that worry them. They want to read. Put it together. So my brother, when you're a leader, if you feel that everybody is wrong, you are right. That's why you're a leader. And that could be your greatest problem in life. It will always make you remove the focus from checking, working on yourself. And a great leader is a leader who keeps working on himself. That's a great leader. Keep working on yourself. I know one of the worst things about leadership. When you are wrong, people will not tell you. <laughs> they won't tell you. They won't tell you. That's, it. That's why the best thing that can happen to you is to have a spouse that can look into your eye and tell you you are wrong. Oh, that's not the best thing that can happen to you. Or, if you don't have a spouse that can do that, you should have a leader in your team that can look into your eye and tell you, Sir, on this matter, you are what? You are wrong. He may not qu qu um, query you in the public. Are you getting what I'm saying? But he can privately call you and say, Sir, on this matter, you are wrong. You should have a Peter. Yes, Peter's query was a wrong time query. But it was still a query. Jesus said that. I said, You won't die. <laughs> Jesus, you are wrong. <laughs> you won't die. You should have a Peter in your team. I can tell you, Sir, you are wrong. And if he tells you you are wrong, you are actually wrong. And you don't just try to fight with him or, 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 or quarrel with him or share it. No, you go back and you work on yourself. So that you become a better leader. Are we together? So, basically, as you, some of these things they do, they end up doing some psychological and medical thing. At the end of the day, they're not dealt with the issue. 
when the soul becomes weak, it has become weak, yes, due to suffering, but it became weak because the strength of the spirit was not communicated to the soul. And what is the strength of the spirit? We said we're born of an incorruptible seed, which is the word of God. Are we together? Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. The word of God is quick, alive, and what? Powerful. The strength of the spirit is the word of God. So we become weak in our soul when the word of God has not become. And it's only the word of God that can renew. The word renew there in the Greek actually means to renovate. To renovate. Are you getting what I'm saying? When the house starts having cracks, it means that it's getting weak in areas. Are you getting what I'm saying? What do they do? They renovate it. So when the soul becomes weak, what do we do to the soul? We renovate the soul with the word. Renovate it. It could get psychological help. Are you getting what I'm saying? Get traumatic help. But when you have finished getting all those help, you better go to the word of God. Because only the word of God can renovate your soul. Are you getting what I'm saying? What is the word of God? Some people that are divorced, it's not because they want to divorce, but because the word of God could not help them. Rather than that, they could, not use, they could not use the word of God to help themselves. What made somebody divorce is what made another person stronger in marriage. Yeah. Oh, you don't understand what I'm saying? What made somebody separate is what made another person become stronger in marriage. Why? It all depends on how you use the word of God. If you take the word of God as, let's read it and let's go. You read it and go. But what you need to practically deal with issues in your soul, you will not be able to deal with issues in your soul. You don't believe it is your soul. And I'll tell you the truth. What made some people divorce? That same thing is what made some people's marriage become stronger. I'm telling you the truth. That same thing. What made some people pack their load and go is what made some people's marriages become stronger. What made some people close business is what makes some people's business stronger. Yeah? Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. So it's all determined by how you use the word of God in your spirit to what? To strengthen your soul. That's why the psalmist said, that what have I hid in my heart? That I may know what? Sin against thee. You have to keep hiding the word in your heart. Don't just hide it in your heart. What do you do? Use it to strengthen your soul. Are you getting me? The psalmist said, like they said, why art thou cast down on my soul? He kept on talking to his soul. Why art thou cast down on my soul? You see, sometimes I like reading the book of Psalms because it just makes me understand the sublimity of life. If I like reading it. I like reading the book of Psalms because it just makes you understand how, the, how, how David was a man of like passion. Are you getting me? Are we together? He makes me understand how David was a man of like. He said, Why had that comes down all my soul? Why? Why? And why had that disquieted it within me? Hope in the Lord. Because when you suffer some kind of things, it is pos- it, it not just possible. Your soul will become weak. There are times you cannot even think straight. There are times you cannot put yourself together. Are you getting what I'm saying? And sometimes you're like, but uh, uh, God, I thought I'd pass this kind of thing. Now the things I'm saying to, I started saying, not saying, saying today, some four years ago, I couldn't say that. Are you getting what I'm saying? And there are ministers who do business. And there are businessmen who do ministry. <laughs> and the minister who does business will take everybody that comes his way as a ministry to do. And the businessman who does ministry will take everybody that comes his way as a commodity to acquire. Unknown to them, they may never know. I hear what I'm saying. Because the approaches will be different. Will be very different. Praise God for more. But I, I, and why we God be teaching us this kind of lessons? You think that if we will not get involved in something, God will not teach us. But when God allows you, when God teaches you something, it makes your soul weak. Because why will your soul weak? So, do I, do I have to go through this? Or, I'm disappointed in this person. Are you getting what I'm saying? Or, I least expected this from that person. And every of that has a way of making us so weak. Are you getting me? Every of that has a way of making us so weak. But what are we meant to do? As we suffer for the gospel for the sake of Christ, we are meant to do what? We are meant to always ensure that by the word we strengthen our souls. It's good to go to counseling classes. Are you getting what I'm saying? Reminds me a movie of a pastor 
who was counseling a couple. Okay, they were not yet married. They're about to get married or something like that. I can't remember, but they counseled them and their marriage finally worked very well. But his marriage was in a mess. You know, that's one thing that many church leaders don't understand. The devils you fight outside will come in for you. You don't understand it. The devils you fight, any battle you fight, get ready for a hit. I'm talking from experience. Once you start, that's why we, some of us are preaching only Jesus. You understand what I'm saying? Let's just preach Jesus so that when you want to fight them, you should come and fight Jesus. When you start, when you start segmenting your ministry, I'm into relationships. I'm into finances. I'm into what is again? Real estate ministry. Ah. It's okay. Some people are into. I know the funny thing, we're never called to do all these kind of things. We discovered that um, 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 one of the uh, one of the, the, the female version of um, Bell, what is her name again? Asteroid. Yeah. Asteroid was an image that had amplified parts of her body. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. So it, sp it spoke about the, 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 the parts of her body that amplified where the you know the part the, the, those parts you get it and it majorly spoke about lost at its peak and we're we're doing this we're teaching some years ago and we discovered that whenever you amplify one aspect of the body are you getting me whenever you amplify one aspect of the body at the detriment of other aspects you are trying to make it more pronounced than the others and that is asteroid at work it is idolatry so when you amplify Relationship, or amplify marriage, or amplify ministry is marriage. By ministry, there is nothing like marriage ministry. There's nothing like relationship ministry. The only ministry we have is the gospel of Jesus. Inside Jesus, there are, there are, there's marriage, there's everything. Are you know what I'm saying? If we, if we stay in Jesus, we carry the principles of Jesus, it will work in our marriage, it will work in our businesses, it will work in our finances, it will work in every other of our life. But when you want to start saying, I'm amplifying this aspect, you are not to the worship of Asteroids. And what happens, what will happen to you is that you will start attracting those forces to you. And they will fight you there like crazy. They will fight you. Only God will help you. Only God. So it's only the Lord that will help you. Only the Lord that will help you. And so, that is the reason why when you go through suffering and your soul gets weak. It's good to go back to Jesus. Just go back to Jesus. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't, I'm not against you going to a um, psychologist and um, go that Seek medical help. It's a good idea. Are you getting what I'm saying? But after you are finished seeking medical help, before you seek medical help, first seek Jesus. In the course of seeking medical help, keep seeking Jesus. After you are finished seeking medical help, what? Seek Jesus. Because even the people that are giving you medical help, they need help from Jesus. Back to the story. Back to the story. The pastor, at the end of the day, the pastor was counseling people and his marriage was in a mess. And so what happened? He had to go meet a marriage counselor. And this marriage counselor, she had not even gone by herself. She was in a relationship. And her relationship was in a mess, but she was counseling him. I cannot say, he said, going to counsel him. And at the end of the day, what happened? God helped him. The Lord revealed to him and spoke to him. And he fixed his marriage. A while after then, the counselor came to meet him for counsel. <laughs> the people you are going to meet for counsel, they even need help. There is no place like his presence. <laughs> there is no place as sweet as his presence. There is nothing as sweet as his worship. There is nothing as beautiful as the world. When you are weak in your soul, go back to the place. After talking to the Lord, the Lord, it's not, it's not understanding the song that the Lord gave this morning. Stay in His presence. Worship Him. Worship Him. Worship Him. Worship Him. Stay in His presence. Feast on His word. Say, but I'll be reading my Bible, Pastor. Keep feasting. Keep reading. What you are going through, that weakness in your soul, is because there was not enough word base. Are you getting me, your soul? Are you getting me? Your strength failed. You failed because your strength was weak. Are you getting what I'm saying? 
You became weak because your student you didn't have enough word base in your soul. In your, soul. your mind was not well renewed enough. So what do you do? When we become weak, Bible says strength in this perfect. When we become weak in our souls, what do we do? We go back to renew our process. Renew our process. Renew our process. We begin to renew again. Are we together? We begin to renew again by the word. We begin to renew. We begin to renew with the word. We renew and renew and renew with the word of God. Over and again with the word of God. Because we will, when we suffer for Christ, we will suffer with Christ. We will, we will become weak in our soul. Because sometimes we wonder why. Imagine the Bible says that in Gethsemane, Jesus prayed for how many? For three hours. At that point, he was praying as a man. What was happening to him? His soul was weak at that point. Are you getting what I'm saying? His soul was weak. And he was praying for God to take the cup away from him. When we, when we go through sufferings with Christ, we will be, be, we'll begin to pray for God. God, I'm not the only one you called. But enough who you call you. Why should I be the one that will suffer like this? Why would I be suffering five people suffering? Look, the way I'm talking, I'm talking ten people suffering. I mean, like, uh, you have made, you have made me suffer as if I have ten lives to live. That's what comes to our mind. Are we together? Amen. But when we suffer, when we suffer, and we start becoming weak, and these kind of questions begin to crop up, these kind of questions begin to come up, what are we to do? We are to be made strong by the world, which is our spirit, which is in our spirit man. Are we together? The Bible says that in First Samuel chapter 30, David and his men came back to Ziklag and they saw that all their wives and children were taken away and their houses were burnt. The Bible says, and these men cried. These were men of value. They cried until they had no breath in them. Huh. Cry to the that you cannot breathe again. <laughs> no breath in them. And after they had lost breath due to cry, the only thing that came to their mind was, let's kill our leader. <laughs> the man that took us to war and left our family vulnerable. Let's kill him. Let's kill him. I know what the Bible says. When David looked at an even priest said, they never, they never even know his job at that point in time. Priests did not know his job. Priests were just staring at everybody and were like, what is happening? Priests did not know his job. The Bible says, and David did what? He encouraged himself in the Lord. And he asked for the Uri mandatory. And he said, Lord, should I pursue? The Lord said, pursue. Overthink. And without faith, recover all. Mm. But before David heard from God, he had to strengthen himself. Listen to me very well. When our soul is weak, we will never hear from God. We talked about silence last, last time. Last week, that with, until we are silent, we hear from God. And that thing is to know that when your soul is weak, with emotion that clouded it, you never hear from God. When her guy stood there and left Ishmael behind her, she was crying. And the agent came to me and said, That guy was happening. And that guy said, I cannot even stay here to laugh to see him die. And the, the, the agent told her, It shall be a great man and every of that. And after that, the Bible says that she she looked by her side and there was a well. Question Is it when the angel came that the well appeared? Is it when he came the well appeared? No. It was not a miracle well. No. The well was there. But because of her emotions that overclouded her, she couldn't see her solution close by. When the soul is weak, it will be close to solution, but it will never see solution. Crying clouds your, your vision for you to see your solution. That's what happens to weak souls. Your solution will just be by your side there, but you cannot see the solution. That's why the devil wants us to be weak in our souls. Yeah. And until the angel came and strengthened her, she saw the solution by her side. So why do we need the one? See, when Jesus prayed in Gethsemane, is that also? What did the father do? The father sent an angel to strengthen him. Because he Jesus, what you need now is strength. Your soul. Your soul is getting weak. Are you getting what I'm saying? What you need now is strength. It's not for God to be taken. It's strength. It's strength in your soul. Strength in your soul. Strength in your soul. 
after God allows you suffer, when he perfects you, he settles you, he will strengthen your soul. Because the solution you need is just close by to you. Are you getting what I'm saying? But your weak soul will not allow you to see it. The solution you need is just by you. But the weakness in your soul will not allow you to see it. The tears in your eye will cloud your vision. The tears in your eye will prevent your vision. I'm not saying you don't want to cry. Cry, but don't cry for no more. Are you not saying? At least while you are crying, be strengthening yourself. Strengthen yourself. Because one time I'm looking for who to strengthen us. I remember somebody is sending me a message and keep up. I like, ah, I don't understand that thing. If you know me, you know me, not to be like that. A man of God said, he, came to, he, 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 he went to preach somewhere and they gave him, after I finished preaching, they gave, they, they, they gave him and uh, his wife some stops um, to take her. Oh, give me, uh, give me my he said, ah. But he says, sir, where you are, where you? She's the one who encourages now. He said, I've never needed encouragement. <laughs> some people say that as a prideful statement. But you don't understand where you're coming from. You get to a point where you don't need external encouragement again. Are you getting what I'm saying? And if he says he has never needed encouragement, it doesn't mean that he has never been discouraged. Are you getting it? But for me to go and start looking for somebody to encourage me, ah, uh-uh, ah, hey, at this level, at this age, I went to a minister's conference and the man of God said, external encouragement is short-lived in ministry. External encouragement is short-lived. See, you have to get to a point where you have to encourage yourself from within. Do you know why? No matter how many encouragement people give you, if God says 10 years, you see the 10 years. <laughs> encouragement will not short the cost short the process. Are you getting what I'm saying? So why are you wasting your time looking for people to encourage you better and say that? My father, my biological father always say, when we tell people you tell your problem, now they're laughing at you. So why are you telling your problem, Papa, now? Why are you looking for to encourage you? You know, you know you sh- because it, encouragement will not cut short the process. Are you getting me? The process will still run. So what do you do? You must learn to encourage yourself in the Lord. Are you getting me? It was why Hagar was crying that the angel came. The angel did not wait for Hagar to finish crying. Are you getting me? Jesus, when he finished praying, God said, the Father God sent the angel. That's what Hagar, she was, Jesus was not crying. Jesus was praying. Uh-huh. Though his soul was weak. But Hagar was crying, her soul was cut out. Send it. So, if your soul has gone to the point of her guy, please, while you are trying to encourage yourself, reminds me of one of my mentees of the blessed memory. When her mother died, she was crying. And she was saying, thank you, Jesus. She was crying. And she was saying, thank you, Jesus. I, I taught them how to thank God in everything. When I saw that in that day, I said, wow. God, you have helped me train somebody. She was crying. I should saying thank you, Jesus. Her demise was one of the greatest pain to me in ministry. Because if she had continued in my teachings, it would have not happened. She was crying. She was saying thank you, Jesus. We're not saying she not cry. You get what I'm saying? We're not saying your soul cannot get weak. Ah, after, if the Bible says strength, that means you'll be weak. No, the Bible did not say we'll never get the power, we'll never be weak. No. If he said, and after the Lord, uh, 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 the Lord perfect you, uh, set strength, uh, do what? Establish you and strengthen you means that you must get weak. Are you getting me? But what matters the most is that when you get weak, seek strength immediately. Stop looking for people to encourage you. Encourage yourself in the Lord like David. In the times of living, nobody's encouraging anybody. Anybody's encouraging you has a reason for encouraging. Oh, you don't understand. Why well, the selfish word? Very selfish word. Ah, selfish. That's why. Selfish. That's why. Uh, you have to be careful. Somebody is encouraging you. Knows why he's encouraging you. It's encouraging for his personal interest. If you look very well, he sings another f- two years from now. That's why it's encouraging you. Are you getting what I'm saying? I was jokingly talking with um, a political aspirant here. And I, 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 and as I said, I was like, you know, I wanted to do a job for me. Like, okay, he said he would come around. I said, don't forget to, I'm your supporter. <laughs> and he said, I said, but you know that I'm not a, 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 a citizen. You know that I'm a non-citizen, so I cannot vote. But don't forget, I'm the supporter. And he told me, the, the support is enough. He said, so he said, the support is more than enough. The support is massive. Even if you don't vote, the support is massive. <laughs> he laughed and he said it. You think people support you for nothing? You think people support you for nothing? You think somebody will encourage you for nothing? In these times are living. If you want to look for encouragement, you can't let them go and look for encouragement. Is that not so? You go and meet the pastor to encourage you. The pastor will not come and look for you to encourage you. 
Ah, come on, please. Are you getting me? And even when the pastor is encouraging you, because you are a church member. That's the kind of level we have nowadays. And not church member, the pastor is busy for you. He's busy for you. He's busy for you. He's busy for you. Let me remind you of somebody who was telling me about the pastor who used to come and pray for them, pray for them, and pray for them. Then at the point in time, he used to go and the pastor used to give him transportation to travel and, and come to his, his location where his church is. So then the pastor was praying for him and the problem was reducing. But after a while, the pastor stopped giving transportation. He now started paying his transport to go and see the pastor for the pastor to pray for him. But after a while, the pastor became busy for him. You think the pastor didn't know why he was giving transport for him? See, this business, you don't understand. Some of us are saying, so we know the business. Think the pastor don't know why he's giving transport money to so pray for you. And the problem is reducing. Why is that the first time he pray for you, the prayer did not finish? Why did he not finish once? But his business, it is reducing. And the reason why it is reducing is so that you have to ship base and become members fully. But you are still staying in your location and trying to go and meet him. Please, you attend the pool that more important. Who are the people? They are there with him. So you need to know how to encourage yourself in the Lord. Are you getting me? So not to encourage yourself. To encourage yourself. You need to strengthen your soul. Strengthen your soul. Are we together? Strengthen your soul. Your soul has to be strong. Strong. Strong, very strong. Because in this journey of suffering with Christ, we will see a lot of disheartening things. We see a lot of heartbreaking things. As a, I went for a past minister's conference, they said, Pastor, your heart will be broken over and again. <laughs> uh, they said, Pastor, your heart will be broken over and again. Reminds me of it, but. Uh, and not say many things. Say your heart will be broken over and again. That I was brace up. This journey is a journey of heartbreaks. <laughs> Even when you calculate it very well, that your heart will not be broken. To say be broken. <laughs> and that means you must come to a point where you have given your heart to God, so there's no heart to break again. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? I must come to a point where you know how to strengthen yourself. You see, one of the strengths of um the the, the wolf and um, I think the dog and some other animals is that when they get wounded, what do they do? They lick their wounds. It said scientific um, uh, medically that in their saliva they have some healing components in their saliva. So they are licking the wound. The thing that I just found that you do, that act of licking the wound is healing the wound. They don't look for somebody else to come and lick the wound for them. When you need somebody to come and encourage you, sir, if you lick the wound, you may dig it. Instead of licking it, you'll be digging it. Imagine a dog has a wound and he tells a lion, come and lick my wound for me. Ah, that's free meal now. Now we eat the whole, the whole, the whole part that is wounded and the, the remaining part of the body. But the dog has to lick his wound by itself. Why? It has to heal itself. See, as we walk with the Lord. In this journey of suffering with Christ, we must learn to use the word of God to heal ourselves. It's called, uh, they call it self-medication. The only place where self-medication is right is in, our, is in <laughs> it's our spiritual life. Because actually, the devil, we are not, <laughs> you are not expected to go and take medication from anybody. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Shall not be For thou, 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 it shall not depart out of thy mind, number one, die, number one. For thou, number two, shall meditate upon it day and night. For therein shall thou, number three, observe to do all that is written therein. And therein shall thou, number four, make thy way prosperous. And shall thou, number five, have good okay? In one verse of scripture, you appeared five times. Huh? Grace. In one verse of scripture, you appeared five times. That means the focus is on you, sir. It's on you. It's on you, man. You don't look for people to come and leak injuries for you. You don't look for people to come and strengthen you. No, no. And then the church is looking at that. Yeah, we come together, iron sharpened iron. But when we come with iron to sharpen iron, sir, we come together to come and strengthen ourselves. When you come, you come to you together. You are taking your strength from the Lord. As we gather together, you are taking your strength from the Lord. Don't look for Brother A to come and say, Do you know what Brother A brought to church? Do you know what Brother B brought to church? When, you open, when Brother B opened his mouth, you see that his, his, his problem is more than even your problem. You see that his wound is bigger than your wound. You are just taking one small wound here. Amrabi, his wound is from here to here. 
Are you getting what I'm saying? Brassy is wood is from here to here. Ah. How will Brassy look like this? Uh, that's what he's coming to do. Bra A, how Bra B, how will it look like from here to here? You, you are just looking from only here. Everybody look your own. The Bible says, let every man bear somebody. How will you bear one another's body? We come. We charge ourselves in corporate worship. But as we are doing corporate worship, we are looking at individual. We are healing ourselves. We are strengthening ourselves individually by the word. Our souls have to be strong. After we suffer for a while with the Lord Jesus, our souls become weak. But we must take responsibility to do what? To strengthen our souls. To strengthen our souls. Nobody will do it for you, sir. Nobody will do it for you, man. You have to go into your closets and pray in tongues for five hours. Nobody will pray the tongues for you. You have to study the word of God until the word sparks up in your spirit. Nobody will study it for you. You have to talk to yourself until yourself answer yourself. Uh, uh. This is where we have come. And people, this is where we have come. Preaching to my family for four years non-stop. I was telling them they think I'm fooling myself. And before I go, I say, okay, assignment is I've come back to preach to my family. I've been to my family on weekdays. Now I've come back to preach to them on Sunday. They say it's a problem now. He's preaching, he's, he's pastoring his family again. Before I started working with you, before I started helping you, I was pastoring my family on Sundays. Now I help you for the work. I'm back to pastoring my family on Sunday because that is the assignment. You see, it's a problem. What's your problem, sir? We have learned to lick our wound by ourselves, not looking for what to encourage us. That's why when they meet us, they don't know, they don't know how to go about us. Because how can people be so all around? You don't know where to help them. The Lord is my helper. The Lord is my help. If you are sending to help me, do what you can do and go. It's as simple as that. You cannot do it. You cannot take his place. You can't. If his biscuit is telling to bring, bring the biscuit, drop it and go. The Lord bless you. I you know something. But don't come and take the place of God. It can't happen. It will never, it can never happen. No man can do that. Because you must learn how to strengthen yourself. Or else men will take the place of God for you. There are ladies who they don't know how to strengthen themselves. And they would rather strengthen them into their into more problem. Are you getting what I'm saying? A brother in church strengthen them into more problem. That's it. Strengthen yourself. Before somebody says strengthening you and he has destroyed you. <laughs> Amen to Jesus. The Bible is there for all of us. So what's the problem? Why need somebody to interpret it for you to get strength? Take it, Holy Spirit, interpret. It's not strength you need. The Lord is my light and my salvation. It's not enough for you. The Lord is the strength of my life. Is it not enough for you? Why need somebody to tell you that the Lord is the strength of your life? Why need somebody? The person that tell you you need strength. Too. So, sir, get your own strength. Are we together? As we walk with the Lord, as we walk with the Lord, as we suffer with the Lord Jesus, we get weak in our soul. But we must always strengthen our souls with the word of the Lord. When we have to get into the place of just worshipping for hours, worship. Worship, sir. Worship. Are you getting what I'm saying? Worship. Just when you have to get the place of just singing and singing hymns and songs and melody, you have sing it. We have to play scriptures. Let's read of the rolling round. Play them. By all means, make sure nobody sees you cry. It's only the angel that's permitted to see you cry. Are you getting what I'm saying? But let nobody see you cry. Don't let the devil see you cry. Don't let people see you cry. Don't let them see you cry. They want to see your tears. But don't let them see you cry. Never, never, never. I know what I'm talking about, sir. I remember the last, the last issue that just finished. I was like, I got to a point. I said, I'll be praying. When I travel, I'll say, God, I am tired. I remember I prayed like that. I say, God, this matter, I'm tired of this matter, God. I'm tired. Yes, I said, God, I'm tired. God, I'm tired of this matter. Lord, I'm tired. That was a prayer. I started praying at the point in time. God, I'm tired. God, I'm tired of this matter. No, I'm healed. I came. And I couldn't appear for the appointment. Not knowing that they came to the appointment to come and beg me. Let us end it. Oh, you don't understand what I'm talking yes. I don't know that they came to come and beg me so far. Please, let us end this matter. Only for me to come and let us appoint. They say, they have been looking for me everywhere. I say, where have you looking for me? My number is everywhere. Please come and take. Come, let's end it. They thought they could win me, but at the end of the day, I win them. I hear something. Sir, you can win the devil. What you need 
a strength. Ah, see, when for us to become strengthened in our soul, we must be sincere with God. I come to point and say, God, I'm tired though. Lord, I'm tired though. I'm tired. Then I'll tell you, Lord, if the, the, the days are not short, even the very election for <laughs> be sincere to God, sir. Stop for me, Superman for God. I'm not a strong man. Are you getting what I'm saying? I have a strong God. I'm not a great man. Abishon Bidaus has said, I'm not a great man. I have a great God. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's all. We are just product of God's grace. We have learned to be sincere to God. Lord, I told God I'm tired. And at the end, the matter finished. The matter got finished. Are you getting what I'm saying? But before the matter finished, I heard the Lord say, I was praying about another thing. And I heard the Lord say, Surely there's an end, and an expectation shall not be cut short. And then God speak on matters that when he tells me what the word does not happen immediately. I remember when, when I previous vision of it, the Lord told me, I woke up in the, in the month of January, and the Lord, and I saw this day came me out of Egypt. And came me out of Egypt. Ah, I said, That means we are coming out of this place very soon with the gold and the silver the Lord had promised us. Ah, and when I saw the, this day in the month of Nisan, when I went to Nisan in the Jewish calendar, I saw it of April, I said, Good, April, we are living here. April, we are living here. Oh, I was assured I was living there. April. The Lord told me we are coming out in January. Nisan was April. But we came out July. And we came out with the good and silver tea. The most important thing was that the Lord told me we are what? You see, sometimes if we don't give you exact date, I get what I'm saying. But we give you exact word. And what matters is what? Exact word. It's recently the Lord gave me an exact timing. Before the Lord will not give me timing. You tell me you do it. If you do it, Put God on his head and tell the Lord, you say, if you did, time have nourish. Is it you that gave the word? He gave the word. Great for the company of those that what? Publish it. When he gives us the word, our work is the word. Publish it. Simple. Our, our work is not to perform it. He's the one who performs. We publish. Simple. Know your job. We are publishers, he's performer. We do our job. And we together. Strengthen yourself. Strengthen yourself. By all means, be strong. By all means, be strong in your soul. Don't let the devil weaken you. Are you getting it? Strengthen yourself. As you suffer with Christ, strengthen yourself in your soul. Because what is coming ahead is glory. Rise up on your feet wherever you are. I don't know how you want to pray this prayer, but today you are asking the Lord, strengthen me in my soul. Beloved, we invite you to make the best decision for your life today as you invite and accept the Lordship of Christ Jesus into your like Him your Savior. Please, confess these prayers now with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner, and that you died on the cross and shed your blood for me to take away my sins. Today, I believe in you and your finished work for me. I receive you as my Lord and personal Savior. I surrender my life to you and choose to serve and follow you all the days of my life. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Beloved, thanks for listening to the full teaching. We believe you have been blessed. Please send us your praise reports. Send us your comments. We'd we'll love to hear from you. Kindly tell others about Grace Life Comic Podcasts. Share what God is doing in your life through these teachings. God bless you richly. Amen. For your love gift of any amount to Grace Life Kami Podcast, kindly use any of our giving channels available to give in dollars. You can send to Universal Merchant Bank Ghana. Account number 033-154-551-2013. Swift code M B G H G H A C to give in CDs. Universal Merchant Bank Ghana. You can send to account number. 033-254-551-2017. To give in Naira, you can send to Ecobank Nigeria. Account number 554-102-0592. Also, for further enquiries, you can call us on plus 233-54594-7132. OR. Send us an email via Ohahuna ministry at gmail.com. Today. Remain ever blessed.